Forgotten, the Forgotten series, book one by M. R. Forbes, spoiler review. Hello, welcome to my channel, Unity151. My name is Joe. I talk and review about military sci-fi and space opera books and audiobooks. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. I'll be talking about five topics I personally like. I'll be giving them a one or a five stars, depending on what I think on the topics and going into more detail with this book as a spoiler one. The characters are story and world building, characters first and second, battles, Technology, Machines of War, so like obviously the technology and Machines of War are one category, it's a little bit too quick. That's spaceships or ground troops, ground vehicles, mechs, stuff along them lines. Then I'll have a little, then there's, <laughs> you got the aliens or the enemy, whoever the bad guy is, human or not, aliens, obviously I've got in more detail with this one now. This is a spoiler review, so if you don't want to listen to a spoiler review and you'd rather listen to a non-spoiler review, there should be a link here somewhere. Right. There's the picture. I'm going to talk about the summary. I'm going to read the summary. I'm going to talk about the summary. Then my five points go into detail. I'm going to read the summary so you guys can kind of get an idea of what the story is about, me talking about it. My five points should keep it good and sweet. So I'm going to go into the summary now. Things are better off forgotten. Sheriff Hayden Duke was born on the Pilgrim and he expects to die on the Pilgrim, like his father and his father before him. That's the way things are on a Generation Starship centuries from home. He's never questioned it. Never thought about it, and why bother? Access points to the ship's controls are sealed. The systems that guide her automated and are out of reach. It isn't perfect, but he has all he needs to be content. Until a malfunction forces his engineer wife to the edge of the habitat zone to inspect the damage. And this is where he messed up. I just want to point that out. I'll get to it. His fault. <laughs> it really bugged me. Until she contacts him, breathless and terrified, to tell him she found a body and it doesn't belong to anyone on board until he arrives at the scene and discovers both his wife and the body are gone. The only clue? A body, handprint, beneath a hatch that hasn't opened in hundreds of years until now. Do you know, when the story's going on, so, I'm diverting a bit because it's just popped in my head, which I'm going to get to. There's this scavenger people, I can't remember they're called, I'll have to look in the notes, off the top of my head I've completely forgot. But they want to get into Metro, they can't get into Metro because it's locked. The malfunction happened, open the hatch, the dead body guy, he was someone coming from Metro, he got killed by an alien. But the body and his wife were taken, but they can't get into Metro if they want to get into Metro. If the door's open, they can get into Metro, why not? I feel like there's no floor there, there's a hole in the story. I just, just realised that. Anyway, so that was that. And that is the summary. I am now going to talk about my five points and stuff. I was happy from start to finish. Like, the only part I wasn't happy about, as in like proper wasn't happy, was the fact it ended. And that annoyed me. So basically, I sometimes on Audible, you read the first or listen to the first story. At the end, they give you like a chapter, maybe two chapters or like a few minutes of like the next book. Obviously, the book's already out. Usually I don't listen to it because I don't care because I'm not going to read it or I will read it, it doesn't bother me. But I was really into the story so I actually listened to it, I think it two chapters, the first and second chapter. And I just listened to them because I was really into it and I wanted to know what happened at the end because well, I'll get to it in a minute, what happens at the end. It happens at the end and I want to know what happens. So I listened to it, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to get it, I'm going to buy the next one. The characters, the environment was great. And I read Exodus which was an outstanding book. I really, really like that book. And in Exodus, you're outside of Metro. So Metro is the city inside the starship, the Pilgrim. And in Exodus, you're actually outside, you're in the control part, which actually looks after the Metro part. They're, they're out of lock. The whole story, I'm not going into that. But you don't really see, you see a little bit of Metro, but you don't see loads of Metro, where this, you're based in Metro for half of it, maybe a bit more than half of it. So I really liked seeing the roles reversed. So that was a bit of you know, nostalgia, nostalgia, that's gold, I can't pronounce the word properly. Wait, wait, it was really good. I was really happy with that. And saying that, here, somewhere, is my uh, Exodus review, spoiler, non-spoiler. Please click the link, watch them videos as well. Helps me, helps you by reading, looking, listening to videos. Oh, story and world building. It's good, as I said, I liked it, really liked it. You're in 
the Metro City, which is in the Pilgrim. So you've got the Starship, the Pilgrim, and then at some point there's a Metro City, which is a couple of miles, I think a couple of miles long wide with like a, um, a skin oh, membrane ceiling blocks. It's all uh, very util util utility. Every bit of space counts regarding the how the, the little house or what they're called. I can't remember what they're called. Um, like little block apartment things. They all the clothes gets reused, so you only have so many cloths, so many everything, so many everything. Trousers, chairs, food, everything's rationed to a degree and done like that basically. Metro's locked out of the ship, which you do find out why they they get locked out of the ship because that's just the protocol anyway that happens. But you find out why no one's communicating and what's happened because it was it's all gone messed up. There's tremors or turbulence. So after the turbulence, because our ships in space have turbulence, we get to that. After the turbulence, tremors mess up, fry the systems, whatever, the hatch opens, something takes the what well, the scrappers, they're the alien, not alien, the scrappers are the people outside uh, Metro. They take the wife, he then goes on his mission and he goes real crazy. His mission is to find his wife and he's literally like a ball in a wrecking, a ball in a wrecking machine. <laughs> he's like a ball in a china shop and he's on a mission and he's, he literally smashes and destroys stuff and shoots and zaps people and kills people to try and find his wife. Obviously, his wife got taken. He knows there was a dead body there, there's blood there, but the governor turns the story around that he actually killed him, killed her, I mean, sorry, because um, the governor knows more about what's happened outside and he doesn't want the Metro people to know what's happened. So with her disappearing through the hatch and there's a pan print and obviously it's people outside, he lies, makes out that Duke actually done it because, well, he doesn't want to, there's, there's, there's a big problem to what happened, to why no one knows what's going on. So with this, he then becomes wanted. So as he's a sheriff, his deputies turn, or don't turn, well, they can't turn on him because they're after him. So he, he runs a mock across the city, zapping, shooting people, fighting trife, which I'll get to the trife in a little while. He gets help from a few interesting people. There's a, there's a prostitute. She's a very interesting character. I actually really liked her. Um, there's a prostitute's mum, who she is an absolute horrendous piece of work of a woman. But I really liked her character. She was just an evil woman, but she was really, really good. Um, there's like a, like I said, nerdy scientist person, but he's not a nerd. He's just a very smart engineering person. Uh, there's a couple of other people as well. They were good. The, the, the pool, the world building, everything, it was nice and solid. With these people, you find out a lot of really good information which has flowed as well. The ship's been traveling for nearly 100 years over its destination, so I think it's been going 390 years. I don't think it's 290, I think it's 390 years. So there's problems. Something's happened, something really bad has happened. He gets out of Metro, finds the scrappers, I think they're called scrappers. They're like a military, the theory is they're the military that got left behind when they shut Metro and the trife these aliens got on board, who, which were on Earth because they was killing Earth and there's a big war going on. Um, they got left behind to try and help everyone else and their their generations down the line are what's left and they're basically not very nice people. You then meet a scientist who then gets butchered, but you find out some good information from her. So you, the whole, you like, you learn, you learn like loads more and you're like, oh, like, oh, I felt like that anyway. After all this, all this drama, trying to find his wife, fighting the scrappers, fighting the trife. These trife are like, they're brittle bones, hollow bones. They're very skinny and light, but they're obviously real quick, big claws, and they're horrible creatures. So he's fighting the scrappers, fighting these um, trife. <laughs> he finds horses. He, he leaves the ship, and he finds out they ain't even left Earth. They're still on Earth. They're still on the mountain. I think it's on the mountain. In the space, they built the space, the space station. They built the wherever they built the ship, in a mountain. It's like, wow, what's going on? And there's like these vibrations, tremors, and like all the scrappers are like, shh, don't make no noise, don't make no noise. And then he starts shooting people. They're just like trying to fight but not make noise. No one can work out what's going on. There's these massive 100 meter giants 
stomping around on Earth now, scooping up people with his little barbed wires on them. They're like, ah, oh, just savage. I had no idea the story was going like this. It seems crazy. Like, if someone told me, oh, there's giant monsters at the end, I'd be like, hmm, that's a bit of a weird space sci-fi thing, really. It's really cool. I just liked it. It's just these scrappers who fought really bad, and they were nasty pieces of work, and then they just kind of were, like, getting killed by these giant, a giant alien human giant things. And it's like, what? I don't, you know, what can I say about that? In the end, doesn't even find his wife. She's been sold to the scrapper's leader. So he's got to try and find the scrapper's leader. His arm gets cut off. He's in a bad way. Absolute mess. Four out of five stars. The story, the world building, everything was great. And as I said before, because I've uh, listened, oh, listen, yeah, read, it, or read Exodus. Because I've read Exodus, you know, these haven't even left. They've stayed on the earth. So uh, between Exodus and this, the world's massive. And I love it. I love it. Characters, first and second. Main guy, Hayden Duke, I spoke about it a few times. Or well, the first before. Solid character, real good. Made bad decision at first, wasn't solid at first. Really annoyed me, but that was the character. The MR Forbes did a good job writing him like that, but he was a solid character. I was rooting him the whole way. I wasn't bored of him, wanted to hear someone else, or not that he had any point of views, but I didn't want to, I didn't care about the others to not be listening to him. I was happy with him. He was a solid, solid character. You know, he was, he's naive because there's, nothing's really happened on the ship. Um, there's like banging and his wife gets uh, off. There's a body, but he doesn't tell no one. He doesn't ask for backup. She goes disappeared. She gets taken, still doesn't ask for backup. He's very naive man and stuff. That, that was the bit that really did bug me or annoy me. I was really was like, oh, you man, what are you doing? Just ask, you know, you've got these buzzer things like buzz, but like, yo, I need some help. Come on, wife's being taken, you know. I've got a chip buzzer thingy. He doesn't even remember to use that. <sighs> Frustrating. Good story, but frustrated me. His second character, the main the main second character was a prostitute called Sarah. She was really cool. Now, her mum, she is a piece of work. So she was a, I don't know, she was, she was either a prostitute or wasn't, I don't know. She, she banged Duke's dad. Whatever. Um, but like, when you get to a certain age, you basically go and go to the medical and they, they kill you off nicely. Or however, they kill you however you die nicely. So then, you know, you're not taking up medicine and stuff because you're dying, you're dying. Kind of it, really. And she's passed her sell-by date and she don't want to die, which I can understand, but she's very bitter and you get you have to get these medical chips, which I can't remember what to do, whether they, like, I suppose you give them to the medical with the chips and then you get help. So, because she wants to keep living, she's horrible to her daughter, belittles her, abuses her, just nasty, and made her be a prostitute. So she's a prostitute just to get chips for her mum. She doesn't get get nothing out of it really. And I feel sorry for Sarah. You know, it it was it was bad. It wasn't nice. Her mum was a piece of work, but I really liked her mum as a character. You know, she was a bad person, but she was a really well written good character. You got the governor next. So the governor at first, he was an ass, and then they liked him, and he was a bigger ass, and then you found out that. The reason why he's been an arse is because he's known what happened at the beginning with the trife gear on the ship and they had the lockdown metro and everyone was dying out there because the governor's passed down the messages because you only have 10 years of being a governor, the next governor. So he's done some bad stuff for the greater good. He killed a load of people because trife can affect, infect you. And because a trife got in metro, he then had to kill loads of people because of it. So at first you think he's a real bad person, he's a nasty piece of work. But even the character says like, they don't know if they could have done what he done and he had to do what he had to do in the story setting. So you understand why he did, which was good as well. So even a bad character from the point of view of the character, the main character, then later on he wasn't so bad, even though he is bad, he wasn't bad, kind of very torn. I like that about him. There's a scientist who she was interested in. She shed some light on a lot of stuff. She's a bit short-lived. The scrappers, they butchered her. Like they, they're very nasty people, the scrappers are. Oh, I've got buzzing down there. Um, then there was a, the engineer guy, I can't remember his name. He was really good. I liked him. 
RIP to him as well. He got done over. Um, there were some other characters, but the, the main characters are these lot here, and they were good. They were solid, solid characters. I thoroughly enjoyed all of them. Again, four out of five stars. Four, five stars. Very good. Battles, pretty much handguns. Got like laser -y stun gun things. Your stun guns. A few knives, small handmade knives, and a big uh, military knife. It's a big. It gets machine. I think it's machine gun. It's machine gun. It's a few futuristic ones that shoot like I think lightning or light pal. I don't know what it is. It was quite cool though. Blue because he got his hand chopped off and he seared his own hand and cauterized it himself. Got some drones flying around. There's some big drones as well. I think it's just big drones, not little drones. Good. Really, really, really good. The weapon. They was all small. The scale. The battles were small. So big battles did happen, as in there was just trife running everywhere and the scrappers are fighting, there's different levels of fighting and all, all going on. But it was good. It flowed the story, it wasn't massive. I didn't feel like, oh, I'm missing, I could do a bigger battle, a smaller battle, slow down, speed up. It flowed with the story, I was happy. Four out of five again. Technologies, machines of war. Cut what I said in the battles, basically. You got handguns, knives. It was just small, got a big ship. But you're in the ship, there's a few cars, hovery, speedy cars, horses at the end. Um, big, giant, alien creature things. That was it. Like, there wasn't really loads of, you know, machines of war or anything like that. that met, you know, nothing like that. But it was needed. This story didn't need it. I didn't feel it missed anything. It was simple, but it went with the story and I was happy. I was very happy. So again, four out of five. Four, five. Aliens and who the enemy are. First, the first main bad person was the governor. You liked him, you hated him, you liked him, hate him. He was an up, down, flip floppy baddie. He was nice because he was always there pretty much all the way until they got outside the metro. Then there was a trife running around killing people. So that was like the baddie that they were trying to hunt. Um, then obviously other people come baddies because they were, were trying to hunt. Um, what his name is? Duke. After them, you've got the more trife on the ship. They are the next load of bad enemy. They're the aliens. The trife were really cool. I like the trife. Not as much detail on this to a previous book, but um, it, it was good. It was fine. Do you know what I'm thinking about? It? In this, there probably should have been a little bit more detail about the trife personally, maybe, but because I knew from another book, that sort of swayed me a bit because I already knew what was happening. Um, what else you got? Then you got the Scrappers. Pig. I think it's called Pig. I don't think it's Piggy. I think it's just Pig. Pig was like the sergeant of the Scrappers. They're cannibals. They're not nice people. They, they're just horrible, bad people. The way they've been brought up, you know, it's their life. You know, they're on Earth. It's running around with giants and try food. Horrible. Multiply within two days, I think they do, or something like that. So it's probably, you know, you got to grow up a bit bad or else you don't survive. Um, and there's the aliens at the end. Not the aliens, the giant alien humanoid things that, to be honest, remind me of the Attack on Titan aliens, actually. Uh, Attack on Titan giants. They were like the last alien baddie things. They weren't, um, they were quite cool. They just these barbs and just grabbed the, 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 the scrappers and killed them. Yeah, the, the, the baddies were good. There was no real... Pig, Pig was the baddie after the governor, but like there was no like evil man behind. There's like the, there, there is the leader of the, the scrappers who his wife's been sold to or given to. You don't know nothing about him. He's obviously the next book or book after or whatever it is. Four out of five. What can I say? They was all good. There was enough. You know, it didn't linger on one person. Next one moved in, moved fresh. Everything was fresh, 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 and fresh. It's a solid four out of five book for me, personally. I could listen to it again. I, I would actually probably like to binge all of them in one hit just to keep the story flowing and flowing. Um, it was a solid, yeah, just a solid four out of five book for me. I'm getting the next one. As soon as my credit flops over, or rolls over, or whatever it is. Or, it might be cheaper just to buy it if it's like a couple quid, I don't know. Whatever way, I'm getting the next book. I liked it. I liked everything. That's it, really. Got nothing to say to that. So that was my review of um, Forgotten Starship, book one. 
by M.R. Forbes. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, my bum. Let me do it. We'll do it with the next one. This one's going to be a little bit longer. The picture of Burke forgotten. Hello, big time. I'm going off my script. I need to stay on my script. <sighs>